Hi everybody, welcome to this Lightroom tutorial. Um, due to a few people requesting this, I thought I'd do a quick video regards a filing system. Um, a lot of people tend to get confused when they're importing stuff into Lightroom. It's how do they organize it, how do they file it, do you do it by name, location, date. The answer is all of these ways are valid and all of these ways work for different people. But I figured I'd start with a, a really simple system which is easy to follow, easy to understand, and it's easy to develop over time so it doesn't get too confusing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import a folder and that folder I've just called Demo Pictures and this would ordinarily be your picture folder where all your pictures are. So I'm going to import that folder so now we have the Demo Pictures folder which ordinarily this could be whatever you want, my pictures, your pictures, um, your name whatever you want just your main picture folder now in there we have our JPEG images this is what we've already accumulated through the years of photography it's not your new stuff we'll deal with the new stuff coming in in a minute but your old stuff's there now what I would do is on the demo pictures I would select all my JPEGs right click on the folder create folder inside demo pictures make sure you include selected files I'm simply going to call this JPG for JPEG create that so now inside the depth there are pictures folder we have a folder called JPEGs and that's where our JPEGs are if I click on the demo pictures again create folder this time I'm going to take the tick out for include selected photos and I'm going to create one called raw files and create so now in our picture folders we have raw files and JPEGs this is the basic um, filing system we're going to start with so what are we going to do with regards to our raw files and how do we maintain some type of traceability if for example I have a, a JPEG and I decide I want to look at this photo again I want to make another copy of this and I want to edit it completely different so I want to go back to the original raw image how do I locate the raw image for that file you'll notice that my files have image file names um, now these are just a, a numerical number which continually progresses each time I add new photos so if I wanted the raw file for that image 4079 I would want some way of being able to find in my raw files folder which raw file relates to the JPEG number of 4079 so I'm just going to show you how I maintain that if I go to the import dialog again I've got a compact flash card here I'll just stick this in and we'll just grab a couple of images just to show you now we don't want to select all these otherwise you'll be here for a decade waiting for them to import um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these four images now on this side development settings we covered this in a previous uh, video I'm going to the general development setting metadata um, that's my copyright now where do I want to put these pictures? Now we know that we created our folder on E Demo Pictures Now I'm going to click on the Raw Files folder Now up here it says Subdirectory I'm going to make a tick there and I'm going to create a subdirectory called Raw Files and for the time being I'm going to call it 100xx space space 100xx this will all become clear I promise and click on import now if we go back to our catalogue we can see we've got our demo pictures inside that we've got a JPEG folder we've also got a raw files folder inside the raw file folder we've now got raw files 100xx to 100xx now what's going to happen is I'm going to 
do my edits on these pictures or make my choices um, and then I'm going to export them so let's just quickly cover how we're going to make our choices here the way I do my selections is once my raw files are in here I will use a pick flag to decide which ones are going to keep um, so for example just for the sake of making a random selection I'm going to click on this file and press P on my keyboard now you see this little pick flag appears here we say we've selected that one and I'm going to pick that one and I'm going to pick that one these are the photos I've decided that have got the possibility of being a finished file I'm not sure I'm going to edit them yet but these are definitely doable files so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of our picks right click on the raw files folder create folder include selected photos and I'm going to call this picks and create so now in the raw files folder we also have a subfolder called picks now this might seem like a waste of time but if I had imported 400 photos and only 50 of them were what I would consider to look at seriously to do anything with at least I could get to these 50 straight away and now we've got on the picks folder and these are our free photos now the first thing I do, they're still all selected I'm going to take the pick flag off by just clicking on the flag because they're all selected it's going to make those changes to everything now you'll notice if I click from picture to picture on the actual picture itself all the files remain selected you can get yourself in a bit of a mess with this when you're making changes and you change the, to all the pictures because you inadvertently still had them all selected if you just click on the grey area around the outside of a picture it will select just that one and not maintain the grouping that you selected together so for example we've now got our picks I would look at these more closely I would look at these in more detail um, decide which were the better ones which were worth keeping which weren't worth keeping and let's say for example I decided these first two here were the two were a better option to continue editing with so what I'm going to do I'm going to press P again now you notice because I had both files selected it's put the P flag the pick flag on both items and now I'm going to click on the picks folder right click again create folder inside and I'm going to call this edits include the photos create so now I have a sub file which says edit and the two files so basically we were importing everything into our raw files folder we then put pick flags on to decide which ones were worthy of further investigation should we say we created a subfolder called picks and we placed those photos in there once we had done that we took our pick flags back off and we started the process again being a little bit more mindful about what was worth editing and what wasn't and we put the pick flags on again then we created a subfolder called edits so now that raw files folder is very easy for me to see what was originally picked as being passable and what I ended up with my final selection for editing now we're gonna look how we export these pictures and it is important to, to know before you export you want to do as much within Lightroom as you can I'm going to select both of my files and on a side note it's always worth putting in your keyword in here as well whilst it's in the raw file so once your JPEG's out everything's done bar any little tidying up or cloning or anything you want to do in Photoshop um, we'll look at the the keyword in on, on the, another video uh, regards how we do that and where we put information so it's picked up directly on the internet when you're uploading files so I'm going to click on export and at this top part here you can export to a Pacific folder I'm going to click on choose and what we're going to do is we're going to choose our demo pictures our JPEG folder take out the subfolder there that's from something else so we go into the the demo pictures folder into the JPEG files now this is where 
the filing system really comes into its own. We're going to click rename. Pick anyone that says sequence within it. And then select edit. Now we want the sequence part, but we don't want the part at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor at the beginning. Press the delete key so all I'm left is sequence. This one just indicates it's going to move it up by one number each time. And then done. This setting will stay there unless you change it. Um, Lightroom does tend to remember what you've done previously, so it remembers how you exported the file, and those settings will generally be there. Um, the only thing you will need to do is change the start number. Now, if you're on a new filing system, I su would suggest you start something like 10001. And what this is going to do, as it exports, this is the file number it will give to the first file. The next file will move up by 1. So it will be 10002, then 10003, 10004, so on and so forth. We scroll down a little bit. File settings. We want this set to JPEG. We don't want to limit the file size. And we want the quality up to 100%. Color space. You do have, I would suggest you just use sRGB. Most monitors are only capable of displaying sRGB, so most people will only be able to view your pictures in sRGB color space. Um, so there isn't really much point to having some fancy system that's going to give you a wider gamut of color if nobody can actually see that color. It's, it's a bit senseless. Image size, we're not going to make any changes there at all. Incidentally, if you are, um, making changes or you're exporting something out to make a copy for a competition or something like that do make sure your resolution is at 300 to keep the best quality we're not going to add any sharpening any metadata that we've put in which would be this information here keywords titles etc we're going to include we're not going to put a watermark and after export you've got the option of shown in folders but we're just going to keep that to do nothing and now we're going to click on export Now, uh, the top left hand side here, it, it's telling you that it's exporting the two files. We'll just wait for that to complete. That's completed. Now, this is the part that sometimes confuses people because they'll go up to this JPEG folder because that's where we sent them. We'll have a look, and there's the six original pictures, but the ones we've just exported aren't there this is simply because Lightroom is a viewing program it has a window to look at a folder but if you don't tell it something's changed it doesn't know so if I go to the actual folder on the E drive demo pictures JPEGs there's our originals and we can see the new photos are there so they are there it's done everything it should do it's just Lightroom isn't reflecting that once you've exported files the easiest thing to do is click on the parent folder in this case it would be demo photos uh, demo pictures right click synchronize folder what does this do it's going to have a look and it's going to tell you if there's new photos there or if there's any changes or anything that's missing um, anything that's changed since the last time it looked and if you press synchronize and now if we click on the JPEG images you'll see the new images are there uh, so that's everything all up to date. This is when we would now look at this folder because we called this 100XX to 100XX. So if we look at the folder view for simplicity, these are the two files that we exported. So from that raw files folder, by the time I'd gone through and made my picks and my edits and decided what was happening and finalized everything and exported them only up with two photos so those raw files are for file numbers 10001 to 10002 so what I'm going to do is in Lightroom now I know which files these relate to right click rename 01 02 now if I want to go back to this picture and I want to make another copy. I want to change something in RAW and export another copy to do something a little bit different with. I've only got to look for the RAW file folder that contains file 10001. And there it is. So it's nice and simple. I mean, you could 
as you progress you can add different folders to this for example your JPEGs you can see some of these pictures have star ratings that you can set for example if I'm on this picture and I press the number 3 key has a star rating 3 this one has a 4 a 4 a 5 what I could do if I sort my pictures by the rating I could say I want any picture that's got four or five stars which is those ones I'm going to right click on the JPEG folder create folder inside JPEG folder and I'm going to call this stage one include selected photos if I now select everything that is not four or five star and I click on the JPEG folder again create folder inside JPEG and call this stage 2 create you can now see all my JPEGs are displayed in the JPEGs folder but I can if I want to whittle them down between stage 1 and stage 2 stage 1 being my best work stage 2 being my okay but not quite cutting the grade not portfolio material so a very quick easy way to be able to say what are my very best images I mean there is no way you should have thousands of stage one images um, you know you do need to self edit quite strongly and only keep your very best work for portfolio or to display or to enter competitions so therefore your stage one folder is never going to be that full unless you're incredibly gifted in which case good luck to you and you won't need to be watching these videos um, but your stage 2 will more than likely have a fair old amount of pictures which is pictures you've got pretty close but not quite hit the mark um, so you do need to self edit but it's a way of again just splitting your images up so it's a little bit easier for you to understand where they are and what they are um, if you run a business for example I mean this is, is based on creating a filing system for the everyday Joe blogs who collects pictures and likes amateur photography and is just organizing things for himself if you would have a business you might have your JPEG and RAW files there in a demo pictures but what you might do is create another folder and import that folder say wedding photography now inside the wedding photography pictures you would have the RAW files folder exactly the same setup but rather than having a file number Jones as the surname for the for the wedding party uh, Smith and and arrange it that way so each person would have a, a raw files folder denoted by their surname and then you would export into a, a JPEG folder exactly the same but you wouldn't have a stage one and a stage two you'd have a Jones a Smith a so on and so forth so there are ways that you can alter this system to incorporate other stuff uh, for example I have a reasonable amount of royalty free images that I purchase for use on web design and, and one thing or another so I could if I wanted to add a folder into here into the demo pictures but it wouldn't say it wouldn't go into the JPEGs or the raw files it could be standalone as another one as royalty free images or I may well put it in the JPEG folder but not in the stage one or the stage two I might create a subfolder within there called royalty free images so there are ways that you can add to this without it getting overly complicated but the very basic idea is JPEGs, RAW files. RAW file folders correspond to the finished JPEG pictures and your JPEG pictures just sort into two folders, your very best and everything else. I hope that does shed some light on a filing system and it gives you a, a place to start from, even if you just adopt this to fit with your criteria, your needs. Just remember, once you've exported your files, you need to let Lightroom know that they're there. So click on the parent folder right click synchronize folder I hope you find this useful till the next time bye